Nitin Srivastavas uh, joins us now from Delhi. Hey, Nitin, good to have you with us. I was going to ask you how much it cost, but I just read. So 145 million bucks. What does is, what is India hope to get out of this? country that has extreme poverty. I think more than 700 million Indians don't have access to a toilet. A toilet. A toilet. I did not quite follow or understand. Not a Pax Americana. ISRO has always been more concerned with helping India's space program and other state goals than competing with other space organizations around the world. It has made a lot of progress in space technology and research by focusing on its skills and top goals that matter. This has helped it become a key player in the field of space. However, some parts of the foreign media, especially in the West, often said that India spent too much money on space and not enough on its people. Take a look at this short clip. India's space agency will launch a spacecraft designed to boldly go where no Asian, no Asian nation has gone. Uh, thank you for being on the program. Uh, there is a huge debate about a country like India investing so much in space. Well, I think as, as recognized by India, the, the space technology is a very powerful one and a very important one if a country is going to progress. And I think they've recognized this and they make the investment. They've been very clever about their investment because they used to buy their satellites, they used to buy their equipment, but gradually they've transferred that over to manufacturing it themselves. And it is commendable that the guest had such an informed perspective on the subject that he was able to speak rationally about India's space endeavor. On the other hand, the news broadcaster did not appear to grasp the substantial advantages that come with having a space organization in a country such as India. She continued by questioning whether there is evidence to support the notion that space programs have a substantial effect on the general economic growth and development of a country. But uh, what evidence is there to show that countries that have really pushed forward in terms of their space programs have seen, you know, an economic benefit? Well, I can offer the news reporter a long list of examples in which ISRO has benefited India. Telemedicine. It's a system that links rural and outlying regions of India to experts in the country's major cities. Patients in outlying regions have gained access to medical specialists they might not have had before. Disaster management. India was able to monitor and respond to natural disasters, such as floods and earthquakes thanks to Indian Space Research Organization. Agriculture. Better agricultural practices can have multiple advantages for a nation, including boosting the livelihoods of its own citizens and generating foreign currency through exports. Crop forecasting. ISRO's satellites provide data on land and crop patterns which are used to forecast crop yields and provide early warnings about potential crop failures due to weather events such as drought or floods. Precision farming. ISRO's satellite imagery is used to identify specific areas of land that require irrigation or fertilizers, helping farmers to optimize their resource usage and maximize their crop yields. Soil mapping. ISRO's satellite data is used to map soil types and their nutrient content, which helps farmers make informed decisions about crop selection and fertilizer application. Weather monitoring, ISRO's weather satellites provide real-time data on weather patterns, which is used to predict and respond to weather events that can impact crops, such as heavy rainfall or heat waves. Education. The Indian Space Research Organization has helped Indian children in education in several ways like tele-education, mobile science exhibitions, and its various satellites like GSAT-11. It has played a significant role in providing internet connectivity in India, especially in remote and rural areas. Defense. Who can forget the denial of GPS data by the US government during the Kabul war when Pakistani military disguised as terrorists, infiltrated India. This was actually a driving force behind the development of India's NAVIC, as satellite systems controlled by foreign governments are not guaranteed in hostile situations. 
ISRO, and DRDO, have contributed to India's defense by advancing its missile systems and providing numerous technologies. Moreover, it is possible that the news reporter could develop seizures after discovering that India's lunar mission has found water on the moon's surface. The United States had spent a substantial amount of money on moon missions, including manned missions, satellite missions, and lunar rover missions, etc. However, it was not until October 2008 that India's Chandrayaan-1 mission, which cost less than $50 million, discovered water on the moon with the help of an instrument on board the Chandrayaan spacecraft called Mini-SAR, which was developed by NASA. In fact, India's Chandrayaan project paved the way for additional scientific exploration and experimentation to be conducted by NASA on the moon. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has a price tag of over $500 million, and the Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, which has a price tag of $80 million, are two of the most notable examples. Apart from legit scientific contributions to the space community, ISRO has challenged the idea that only rich countries can afford to participate in space research by showing that exploring space does not have to be a costly endeavor. ISRO's Mars Orbiter mission, also called Mangalyaan, was also a technology demonstration mission. India was the only country to reach Mars on its first try, even before the Chinese, whose first attempt in 2011 was failed, and took nine more years to reach Mars. ISRO reached this milestone for less than $73 million, which is a lot less than it costs to make a Hollywood movie. For example, The Martian cost more than $108 million to make. Scientists also learned more about the surface of Mars because of the mission. ISRO has put out several high-definition pictures of Mars, which in my opinion looks stunning. During the Mars conjunction in May and June 2015, Indian scientists used data from the Mars Orbiter mission to study the solar corona. When the Earth and Mars are on opposite sides of the Sun, the Sun's corona can be seen as a bright ring around the Moon during a solar eclipse. Scientists were able to study the solar corona and places where the temperature changes quickly because of this rare event. Scientists used the data they got from this event to study the temperature, density, and magnetic field of the solar corona. This helped them learn more about how the sun works and how it affects space weather. India has also given its neighbors like Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, the Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka access to a specialized satellite. The satellite is also known as the SARC satellite, and it can be used for a wide variety of purposes beyond simple satellite communications. These include weather and disaster warning and management, navigation, education and e-governance, agriculture, and more. As of March 26, 2023, India had launched 422 satellites for 34 different countries. India has also become known as a trustworthy and affordable place to launch satellites which has brought business from all over the world. In the past few years, the country has sent satellites into space for countries like the US, Canada, UK, France, Israel, Italy, Japan, Australia, Brazil, etc. Now, India's space agency has reached a point where it is actively contributing in astrophysics research. India's AstroSat Space Telescope scientific achievements are too many to enumerate. In August 2020, AstroSat detected extreme, ultraviolet light from a galaxy 9.3 billion light years away from Earth. It has also witnessed the emergence of black holes. AstroSat has discovered rare ultraviolet bright burning stars in the Milky Way. AstroSat detected a gamma ray emission on January 5, 2017. It was unclear whether this incident was related to the gravitational wave signal detected by LIGO on January 4, 2017. From the black hole merger event, AstroSat helped in differentiating the two events. India is also developing new technologies 
for more cost-effective space missions, such as small satellite launch vehicle, which is designed to provide a cost-effective option for launching microsatellites weighing up to 500 kilograms into low Earth orbit. I can point out more accomplishments of ISRO, such as the India's reusable launch vehicle, which has successfully performed its autonomous landing. However, listening to ISRO's accomplishments may cause the BBC's brain to whirl and cause it to collapse into the ground, where India is about to launch its astronauts into space, while the UK is struggling to send a satellite into Earth orbit. Instead of criticizing India for why it is spending money on space, BBC should have asked whether India could help its country in the field of space technology. I am certain that India would never back down in terms of assisting other countries in space technology, just as it did for the United Arab Emirates to reach Mars, which made the UAE the first Arab country to do so. However, if you're good at something, never do it for free.